Good evening, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about starting an infrastructure from scratch. I see a lot of people that are coming back to the farms, actually their first foray into farming. They don't have any experience. They've made some money at their town job and they're tired of the suburbs. They want to get out on the land and some still have kids. They want to raise their children in the country, which I can't blame them. I think it's a noble endeavor to pursue. But a lot of people are making some really bad decisions when they start out farming. And where do you start? I mean, you got this blank piece of ground. The fence is in disrepair. You don't really have a perimeter fence. Maybe the fields are grown up in brambles. You got broom sedge everywhere. Where do you start? Well, first of all, I'm gonna cover it right at the very beginning. Don't go out and spend money on building huge bodies of water. I know people get a piece of ground, they see this big old draw going up to their property. Well, that'd make a pretty lake. Man, we need water. Yeah, we gotta have water for our livestock. Let's build that lake. Well, there's nothing wrong with building ponds, and I'm I'm a firm believer in ponds, but for the cost of building a you know ten to twenty, thirty thousand dollar dam on a lake. You can build a lot of ponds and you can put them around your farm right where you need them. So just remember this, every foot, every square foot that you cover up with water on your farm, it will never grow grass again. And you're selling grass. So the more of it you cover up with water, the less you have to make a profit and to put your farm in the black every year. And your purpose, I have a lot of people say, but Greg, I, you know, I bought this land not to, not to make a lot of money from, but I don't want it to lose money. That's a, that's a good goal. That's painful. It's painful. I see some of these farms that are losing lots of money. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Well, you know, it's a big farm, but they're losing a lot of money. There's no fun in that. And it's ridiculous. It's just poor planning, poor selection of what you're doing, and not getting all your eyes, your eyes dotted and your T's crossed. You just got to do things right. So the first thing that I would do is I would build a good perimeter fence. Fence protects you and it protects the livestock. And if you can't keep your animals in, they're over on your neighbors, you're not going to ever have a successful grazing operation there's a very good chance you could get sued. Your animals get out, somebody hits one on the road, and somebody gets hurt or killed, even worse, killed. Um, you better hope you have some really good insurance. Um, but that's just ridiculous. Build a good fence. And that is not a fence that I'm looking at right there. That is not a perimeter fence. That is poly water. So I hope some of you all are watching this that you know, when you buy livestock and you bring them onto your farm don't put a polywar up and call that a fence you're going to kick your cows out of the trailer they've been hauled you know 100 miles or 20 miles whatever you open the trailer and they go charging out they don't know where they're at and they're going to run right through that and they're gone if that is your perimeter fence you are in trouble i'm talking five to six high tensile wires electrified the really good charger minimum 8,000 volts timeless timeless fence post you got to use timeless fence posts that's the best post made put it in the ground and don't worry about it anymore it'll never short out you don't have to paint it it's already pre-drilled and folks for the time that you spend trying to replace a post or find a short in your farm the best money spent is a, is a timeless fence post. And the next is a really good charger, Speedrite. It's the best charger made in the world, Speedrite. That's what I would get. If you're not putting out eight to 9,000 volts, you don't have a charger. You got a play toy. You've got to keep these animals home. And see, the, the electric fence is a psychological fence. 
when you touch that and get shocked, you remember it a long time. And you don't want to do that anymore. It hurts. So once you get your cattle broke to hot wire, then we can talk about this type of fence. This is our temporary fence that we put up every day. There's there's a post up there that came out. And uh, this, this fence will be taken up when they move over to this side of the pasture, but this is not a perimeter fence. So I just wanna make that clean, clear. Uh, the, the next thing that I would go after is I would put in some water. And that can be ponds, it could be a developing a rock ramp on an existing pond. Don't let your animals in the ponds. If you spend all that money to build one, or if you got a nice pond on your property, you put these thousand pound animals out there, they're gonna destroy it. They like getting in them, and they'll poop and pee in it, and now you got disease in your cow herd. Oh, and by the way, you've killed all your fish. Not the best thing to do if you're trying to make a living on the land. These animals are around 80% water. And you need to make sure that they get the most high quality water possible. Okay? So you got your water and you got your fence. The next thing, I get this a lot. Don't do this one. But people say, oh, bought the land. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a I'm gonna build a barn. I'm a farmer, I gotta have a barn. You don't need a barn. That's a waste of money. Why are you gonna build a barn for? These animals don't need a barn. Negative 13 out here the day. These animals are fine. Just don't let them camp out in the mud. They don't need a barn. That's more to satisfy. I think people have watched too many movies. And if you're a farmer, you gotta have a barn, you gotta have a tractor and a new pickup truck. I'm not saying any of those are bad. If that's what you want and you can afford it, but don't let it bankrupt your farm. Here's what pays the bills right here, folks. Livestock. So once you get your fence and water in, put your money into these animals. They reproduce. They give you a baby every year and they're doing it on grass that's grown by solar energy, sunlight. So that's, that's it go into a lot more detail at our grazing schools but I mean I, I get a lot of emails and getting more and more every day and uh, I feel bad for some of these people because they really don't they don't have a clue where to start and they tell me that and I, I feel bad I'm telling them you know I can't give them in an email everything they need to do you need to learn this stuff folks otherwise you're gonna do it wrong and this is a wonderful life to be having i mean it is it's a wonderful life we the boys and i we worked all day doing other things today we came over here for the last hour of our day and we moved the cows because how, how many hours do you all spend out with them cows i mean you move 338 head it must have been must have been a couple hour process no you open that gate down there and they moved themselves we had the wire put up we put that up this morning but it's it's not it's not an all-day job and I get this all the time. People say, but I don't have time to move the cows. I don't have time to move that wire. They'll spend all day watching TV or, or baling hay or doing all this other crazy stuff. It doesn't pay you anything. Folks, the, the most money we make is right here. Moving that wire twice a day, morning and night. Giving them a little piece of stockpile with them cows stay looking like that all winter long. And I'm not the only one that can do this. Every one of y'all can do this. So I'm going to sign off there. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it is, it, it's, it's a wonderful thing to have the right animals on the right kind of land and the right kind of grass, the right type of management. And uh, it, it's, it's a good life, folks. I heart, heartily recommend it. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, Y'all hit that uh, subscribe button on the way out if you would. I'd really appreciate it. And everyone have a safe one. We'll see you next time.